Today we're going to look at the story of the parable of the sower. The parable of the sower is in this gold box because it's a precious story and it's a story that was told to us by somebody very precious, somebody very special, um, somebody from a long time ago who was a very special person. He had lots to, uh, to say, lots to do, and there were lots of very special things about him. One day he was with his followers and they were talking about a kingdom. And this was a special kingdom, a kingdom nothing like the place where they were living and nothing like the place, a place they'd ever heard of before. Um, and our very special, special person told his friends around him and the people listening um, a parable. Now a parable is a story which has a special meaning, which has a different meaning to it. And sometimes when we go to a parable, it, we may not always understand it. Um, it's okay, it is a little bit like the box, in that sometimes you can open a box and find nothing inside, and other times you open a box and you find lots inside. Well, a parable is a little bit like that. And sometimes when we start to think about a parable, we find lots and lots and lots in it, and other times we find nothing because we don't understand what the parable is about. Now this parable, um, our special friend, um, Jesus, was, was talking to his disciples and he was talking to them about this special kingdom and he told them um, this parable. And there are things in, in my box which um, will help me tell the story. And we start with, um, with this. So what, uh, what could this be? This is the story of the parable of the sower and our, our piece of felt, our piece of fabric represents our soil, our soil today. And I have lots of other things inside my box which will um, help me tell the story. This is our sower. This is our sower. Now the sower went out to sow his seed and he sowed the seed on, on the path um, in front of him. He, he sowed the seed wherever, wherever he went. Some of the seed that he sowed fell on to the path. And no sooner the seed had hit the path than the birds came, one by one. And they came and they ate all of the seed that fell on to the path. And these are all the birds of the air that came and ate the sower's seeds. And then more of the sower's seed as he sowed fell onto stony ground. And as the seed began to grow and tried to put down its roots, it couldn't, it got stuck. And the roots were not able to grow. Uh, and as the as the seeds pushed their way into the soil, they were blocked by the stones. So the seeds withered away and they died. 
and then some of the seed that the sower sowed fell onto thorny ground. Ground that was covered in thorns and covered in weeds. And again, the seed tried to grow and as it pushed its roots down into the soil, it began to grow, but so did the weeds, so did the thorns, and they grew up around the seeds and the plants, and they withered and they died as they were choked by the weeds that grew around them and took the moisture from the soil. And then the sower sowed his seed, and some of the seed that the sower sowed fell onto good soil. And those seeds put themselves down into the soil and they were able to put their roots down and they were able to grow and they grew and they grew into, into plants. And when the time for the harvest came, those, those plants were able to yield 30, 60, and a hundred times what the sower sowed into that soil. Now, I wonder what you think of this version of this, the parable of the sower. I, I wonder what your interpretation of this is. And I wonder what you think of the birds. Who do you think the birds could be? And the types of soil, the stone, the thorns, and the good soil, I wonder what you see that as being. And then I, I look at the harvest, and I see the harvest, and I, I wonder what you think that harvest might be. And who, who, do you, who do you see as being the sower? And what is the sower sowing? What are those seeds? That are being put down into the soil by our sower. So I leave you for a, a few moments, for a, a few minutes, before we look again at the story of the parable of the sower to mull those questions over. Who, who do you think that the sower is? Who, what do you think the sower is sowing? And what are the soil, what are the types of soil that he is sowing those seeds into? At about that time, Jesus left his house and sat on the beach. In no time at all, a crowd had gathered along the shoreline, forcing him to get into the, a boat. Using the boat as a pulpit, he addressed the congregation telling stories. What do you make of this? A farmer planted his seed and scattered the seed. Some of it fell on the road and the birds ate it. Some fell on the gravel. It sprouted quickly but didn't put their roots. So when the sun came up, it withered just as quickly. Some fell in the weeds as it came up. It was strangled by the weeds. Some fell on the good earth and produced a harvest beyond his wildest dreams. Are you listening? Are you listening? The story, study this story of the farmer planting seed. When anyone hears news of the kingdom and does, doesn't take it in, it just remains on the surface. And so the evil one comes along and plucks it out, right out of your, that person's heart. This is the seed the farmer scatters on the road. 
the suitcase in the gravel is this is the person who hears and instantly responds with enthusiasm. But uh, there is no soil of character. And so when emotions wear off and some difficulty arrives, there is nothing to show for it. The seed taste in the weeds is the person who hears the king of blues, but weeds of worry and illusions about getting more and wanting everything under the sun. Strangle what was heard and nothing comes of it. The seed cast on good earth is the person who hears and takes in the news and then produces a harvest beyond his wildest dreams. Amen.
evening. Hallelujah. We're going to spend some moments now in prayer um, and we're going to use our prayer tree again like we did last week and we still continue to pray for those on the tree. Uh, we think particularly still of uh, Ralph as he comes to term with the death um, of Ian and we pray also for Louise and Alan and the family as they support Ralph through this uh, difficult time. We also pray for Peter um, who lives with Ralph and is supporting Ralph uh, through this as well as um, having thoughts himself um, around the death of Ian. I want to bring before you this morning and bring and lay before God um, three other requests that we've had come in this week. We, we want to, to pray for Ronnie. Uh, Ronnie is Val Drew's great grandson um, and, is in, as, and is in hospital um, at this time. He was born premature um, and is only a very young baby, um, is in intensive care and is struggling um, with, with life um, at the moment. So we, we put him in God's hands and we ask for God's healing upon Ronnie, if that's God's will. We also pray for Deborah, who is a friend um, of Pauline um, and has some, some health issues at the moment. We bring before her, uh, God, her. I wanna pray also for Royston. Uh, Royston is in hospital at the moment and has uh, pneumonia. Um, and I want to pray for, not only for him and for God's presence to be felt by him, but I also pray for Christopher, who supports his dad um, and loves his dad dearly. We pray for God's presence with Christopher too, as he comes to terms with his dad's illness um, and also worries about his dad being away from him um, when he is feeling, feeling poorly. So we bring them before you too. Um, at this time and just pray God's, God's presence upon them. We have a, a God who is amazing. Yeah, Father God, you are amazing. We know that you're a God who provides for us, provides our every need. And as we think this week of harvest and we think of all those things around us, all good gifts around us are sent from heaven above, then thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for all your love. And those words just ring true. We, we're, we're praying for these people who are, who are on our hearts and our minds. Uh, Lord, we know that you're a God who answers our prayers and we know that you will give these people in all these different situations what they need. And we lay them before you and we trust you with them and we trust that you will answer our prayers. So Father God, as we think about reaping um, a, a harvest today, we just pray for these people. And we just pray that you will be known to them, um, that as they, as they are in their circumstances, that they know the presence of God um, in there with them and that they're not on their own. Those who live on their own are not on their own because God is always there. Those who live with other people can feel God's presence in such a way that they know that there is an extra person sharing in their situation uh, because God has it in hand. So we lay before you all these situations and circumstances this morning, Lord, and pray your blessing upon them. And we pray this in the most precious name of your Son, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
had some time to think about what the, the parable of the sower means, whether you've thought about the types of soil, whether you've thought a little bit about what it means um, and the implications of it. Now, Jesus was often followed by great crowds, by lots and, and lots of people. Um, we know that there was the feeding of the 5,000. We know that he took part in the Sermon on the Mount. And I'm talking thousands of people. I mean, I, I preach to just a few compared to that on a Sunday um, and have preached, you know, maybe to a couple of hundred people maximum, um, which is nothing like Jesus's um, teaching um, would have affected. I mean, he was often talking to his disciples and would have spoken to his disciples as he went around in his everyday life. And people followed him and waited and wanted um, him to talk. And he spoke in parables, and actually parables are very precious to us because they are the words of Jesus. I think sometimes we forget that. We, we, we talk about the parables, but we forget that they were actually stories that were told by Jesus. So they are actually Jesus's words. Um, and he told stories, he, told, he, he spoke in pictures because that's what people uh, were able to um, understand. But those stories, those pictures that he talked about had had hidden meanings, had meanings um, in them that you had to think about. And he did that on purpose because he wanted people to think about what he was saying. He wanted them to, um, to wonder what the stories meant and to search and to be searching for those answers. This parable is recorded in three of the four um, gospels. It's recorded in Matthew, in Mark and in Luke. So what does the parable mean? What does it talk about? It talks about God's kingdom, the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is planted as that seed in this parable. Now, the kingdom of God was something that people would have talked about in those days. They were looking for God's kingdom to come, but they were looking for it in a different way. They were looking for God's kingdom to come and save them from the Romans. They were looking for that Messiah, that king, who was going to save them from the Romans who were causing them to live a, a horrible life, if you like. They needed to be saved. They needed to be redeemed from the Romans. They were looking for that warlord of a Messiah. And we know, of course, that Jesus came as that gentle, um, gentle saviour. He went into Jerusalem during his final week riding on a donkey, not on a war horse, on a donkey. So we know that he wasn't the type of Messiah that they were looking for and that he was going to save his people but not in the way that they were expecting. So he talks about the soil and the soil is us and it's us receiving God's word, receiving the news of the kingdom of God. The reactions of our hearts are the four types of soil. We have a hard heart which is the footpath. We have a shallow heart which are the stones we have a crowded heart which are the weeds and we have a fruitful heart which is the good soil now the hard heart is the soil that falls on the path it's immediately eaten by the birds it doesn't get the chance to do anything because it's immediately stolen immediately stolen these people have never believed they've pushed it away they've dismissed it it doesn't get chance to do anything. The shallow heart is where the seeds fall on stony soil and it very quickly withers and dies. People hear the word of God. They at first get excited about it, but it can't push down its roots because the stones don't allow it to. It's quickly taken away. The word is quickly taken away and it dies. It's stopped from putting down roots. It's snatched away by Satan. The word is dismissed. Now the crowded heart is where the seeds fall into the weeds. Now the weeds and the seeds grow together for a while until one is choked by the other. People hear the word of God and they allow it to grow. But so does everything else in their lives. Everything grows together until one reaches the point where it pushes the other one away. They become so busy, people become so busy 
with the glamour and the riches of life, that they allow that to push away the word of God. They lose interest in God and they turn back to the things of the world. And finally, we have the fruitful heart, the good soil that produces a harvest. Do you know what? We're the ones who determine what type of soil our hearts are. We decide if we're going to be hard or shallow, crowded or fruitful. James 1, 21 says, Therefore, lay aside all the filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save our souls. Jesus wants to look at our hearts' response to his word. The last kind of soil, the fruitful soil, is what Jesus wants us all to be. This heart takes the word, thinks about it, and sends down roots. It then stands on a deep, firm foundation and holds on and begins to get nourishment. And when it's nourished, it begins to bear fruit. And that's the fruit of the spirit that we've been talking about in the last couple of weeks and we'll continue to talk about in the next couple of weeks. Love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, self-control. If people's hearts are like the different types of soil that the seeds fell upon, can we put people's names to those types of soil? Can we think of people that we've known who represent the different soils? Mary, she hears the word and immediately a voice whispers, that isn't for you, and she walks away. Tony enthusiastically hears the word and responds, but he gives up when his family and his friends ridicule him. John hears the word, but voices louder, like the call of a career or wealth, drown out the voice of God. But then Beth hears the word. She trusts Jesus and lives a life full of joyful obedience. And she blesses many others. Why did Jesus talk in parables? Well, he talked in parables to help people understand spiritual truths. The stories aid our understanding. Jesus tells us the stories, so we need to think, to really think about what he's saying, to look for the meaning. The deeper the thinking, the deeper the meaning. When the time is right for us, we'll get it. As I said, a parable is a story with a meaning. And sometimes we go back to those stories again and again, before we finally get it. But that's okay because God will reveal to us what he wants us to understand when it's time for us to understand it. And just as our gardens at home, if we have gardens, are tended by us, so God tends the seeds that he plants. A gardener will look at their garden and will decide what they want to plant and when they want to plant it. They prepare the soil beforehand and then they plant their seeds or they, they plant their seeds or they put in their, their bulbs or they put in their bushes and then they water them and they tend them with loving care. The story in this parable, the soil wasn't prepared beforehand. The seeds were just chucked willy-nilly at people, um, at the soil, and they was responded likewise. And I think what we have to remember is that people's hearts are like those soils and that they're not always prepared to receive the word of God. So just as we would tend our gardens, we have to try and prepare people's hearts. So we go and we talk to someone and they dismiss us. I so, said, okay, we pray about it and we go back and we talk to that person again. They may dismiss us again. They may not. What I'm saying is, is that we never give up on people because people's hearts will change as time goes on. And it may well be that I plant a seed, but someone else will water it. Someone else 
fertilises it, but then someone else reaps the benefit. And it's so with us. When I look at my life, I can see times in my life when I've been different types of soil, when I've dismissed the word of God, when I've been like the stones, when I've not allowed a, a word of God, I've not allowed the word of God to go in. Other times when I, the word of God has grown and then it's been choked by something else. But then times when my life has been very fruitful because I've allowed the word of God to do what it needs to do. And I think we need to have patience with the people around us because their hearts will be the same. Today, their hearts may be like the path. Their hearts may be like the stones or like the weeds. But next week, their hearts may be ready to receive. So we need to be ready to share. We need to be ready to be fruitful and to share that fruit with other people around us. We need to remove the obstacles that there are to our own lives and we need to help other people to remove the obstacles from theirs and that that is by us being faithful to God and allowing God to be faithful to us and to understand and remember what an amazing God we have what an awesome God of grace that he doesn't ever give up on any of us that we don't give up as gardeners, do we? Because if a soil doesn't produce, then we will add to it. We will, you know, dig it up again, we'll remove the weeds, we add the fertiliser, we do all of those things. And if we do that to soil in our garden, how much more will God do for us and in our lives if we let him? So please, as God has not given up on you, please don't give up on anybody else. I want us this week <clears throat> to think about the harvest that we have in our own lives. How much fruit do we bear for God? Do we listen and act? Do we listen and dismiss? What do we do for God? And I also want us to think about the people around us. People that we know who are not Christians or people that were Christians that aren't anymore. People who are at the different stages, if you like. Think about those, maybe write them down. Write a list of people who we know need God. And let's pray for them this week. Let's decide that we're gonna start by praying for them and then see if there's any way that we can work with those people, that we can have contact with those people that we can share our faith with those people and we can try to plant the seeds. Let's not give up on anybody this week. Let's be fruitful for God and try and um, try and sow seeds. Sow the seeds for his kingdom and be fruitful Christians for him. Try not to keep our faith to ourselves this week, but be like the sower who sows his seed and throw it out to as many different people as you possibly can. We're going to listen to the song, I stand in awe of you. I stand in awe of you. I stand in awe of this amazing God who loves me. An amazing God who loves you, who loves all of his creation as beautiful as it is, and wants us to worship him. I stand in awe of you. Infinite wisdom 
can fathom the depths of your love You are beautiful beyond description Majesty enthroned above
final word this morning is brought to us by Dougie. I went round the, this week and I, I had a visit with Dougie and I videoed him and uh, he had a message for you out this morning. So just listen to Dougie and enjoy. Uh, hello there. We just had a good service by our captain. And uh, all I've got to say is that I hope you're going away more cheerful and you will be after giving a good sing song. And uh, be careful and uh, just trust in the Lord and you'll be all right. We have the opportunity to record Ian's funeral service and make it available to view online for up to 28 days after the service. Please contact Captain Teresa by Monday the 19th of October if this is something you would be interested in viewing. <laughs>